In today's video, I'm gonna be giving a big update on the 180 gallon acrylic aquarium behind me. This is full of South American cichlids. It has been up and running for three full years now. So I'm gonna walk through how the tank has evolved during those three years, as well as some recent updates to unfortunately losing a fish and adding a new fish to this tank. I'm gonna show how to do water changes and also talk about some future ideas for this tank. And I'm very excited for that. So let's dive right in. So I ordered this 180 gallon acrylic aquarium online three years ago. My brothers helped me set it up that day. It was basically the biggest aquarium I could fit down my stairs and into the basement. The acrylic was a little bit lighter than a glass tank would be so it made it just slightly easier to get it down here and that's why I really went with acrylic. Sometimes I prefer glass tanks, especially custom aquariums tanks, but this acrylic has held up really well during those three years. The one thing I don't really love is how easily acrylic can scratch. And I have to be very careful when I'm doing maintenance on this tank to not scratch the acrylic. So when we originally set up this tank, we did sand, driftwood, rocks, and fake plants. I knew that some of the cichlids that would be going in here from South America would definitely not do well with live plants. They would tear them up and destroy them, especially the severums and soon to be the Oscar. In the first few months, I definitely had some tannins in the water coming out of the driftwood, but after a few water changes and adding Kimmy Pure Blue to my filters, the tannins quickly went away and the water has really been crystal clear ever since. This tank is filtered by an FX6 and a CJ Whale canister. I actually had two FX6s on this tank originally, but one stopped working, so I had to replace it with a CJ Whale. I also added a wave maker from CJ. This is the Extreme 6500, I believe, and it's definitely a workhorse, providing a lot of flow in the tank, making the filters work more efficiently, and keeping the sand spotless. One of the main questions I get about this tank is how I keep the sand looking so pristine. One of the secret weapons are the Geophagus species, which are constantly sifting that sand, kicking up debris or uneaten food which then goes into the filtration. And another question I get a lot is where I ordered the fake plants. I ordered these online from EliteCichlids.com, but unfortunately they shut down their business a year or two ago. So there isn't really anywhere to order plants like this. You can go to your local Hobby Lobby though, and they have similar plants. You just have to kind of DIY them for your tank. And then the sand on this tank is Caribsea Sunset Gold, and I am totally happy with that choice. It's probably my favorite sand substrate I've ever used. I think it looks really natural for South American cichlids especially. But that leads me to the first unfortunate update about this tank, and that is one of the fish I recently lost. But first, throughout the three years that this tank has been set up, I really haven't experienced many losses, which is great with some of these big cichlids especially cichlids like an Oscar that can be a little aggressive at times. But I did lose a true parrot in my first year. That was an awesome fish. It got an external cut either from cichlid aggression or running into something and I just couldn't save him. And then about a year ago, I lost my big chocolate cichlid, which was definitely a gut punch. It's still one of the worst losses I've had in the hobby. I love that fish. It actually jumped out of the tank through a small slit in the back, which I now have extra covered. But the fish that I tried to save about a month ago was one of my Geophagus Tapahos. I originally had a group of seven Geophagus Tapahos, and I've had them for about four and a half years now. They've been an awesome fish to watch grow. They've tried to breed a few times in this tank. I've seen eggs and breeding behavior multiple times, and that big dominant male took part in that breeding behavior quite a bit. But one day I looked in the tank and saw an external cut on its head, it didn't look good and actually kind of looked like the issue with the true parrot a couple years ago. So I acted fast, I pulled him out of the tank and put him in a 20 gallon quarantine tank so that I could treat him and he could be away from any of the other cichlids during treatment. But after about a week, the medication didn't really help and I lost that big male tapahose. It was definitely a bummer, one of my favorite fish in the tank and one that I've had so long that it was a tough loss. I now have a smaller group of geophagus tapos in here and one less male, obviously. I think I have a majority of females left, but one of them is starting to look better, uh, becoming maybe that dominant male, so we'll see. So that was the unfortunate update. One of the more exciting updates was that I did have a fish in my other quarantine tank that originally I had planned to go into the discus aquarium, my 90 gallon tank, and I kind of changed my mind when I got some of those bigger discus for the tank. So I decided to put the pleco in with the South American cichlids. It was a really good size. It's a blue phantom pleco, which is an omnivore, so it'll eat some of the algae in this tank, as well as some of the uneaten food or food that sinks past some of the cichlids. I do think a pleco has always been a missing piece to the South American cichlid tank. 
I just didn't want to overdo it and add too much to this tank too quick. But this blue Phantom Pleco is already looking great. As soon as I put him in the tank, the Oscar was checking him out, wondering who this new fish was. But luckily, no aggression has happened to this Pleco and he settled in really nicely. So before I give an update on the rest of this fish in this tank, let's talk about water changes next. So the Pleco has settled in nicely. A few days later, he's already gone to town on some of the algae but there is a little bit more on the acrylic and I do need to do a water change. So I'm gonna show that whole process and what I do with that algae to get it off the acrylic safely. So I've shown this process many times on the channel, but just a quick overview of what I typically do. I have the CJ Ultra Zero pump, which is connected to the Python water change hose. And this pump pulls out water at a faster and more efficient rate than the gravity siphon would on the other end. And as the tank is draining, that's when I'll scrub off some of the algae or even move the sand around. I have a few cichlids in here, like my Severums who are currently breeding. They're pushing up piles of sand all over the place. So sometimes I like to use this time just to move it back around. It's never gonna be perfect, but I do like to even it out just a bit. I use this shower scrubber, which I bought on Amazon. I'll leave links to everything down in the description below. But this works on some of the lighter algae, maybe the brown algae on the acrylic. There are some tougher green spot algae spots that I'll actually go in manually later on as I need to apply a little bit more pressure to some spots. And on this tank, I usually change out 30 to 40% water on a weekly basis. Sometimes I'll stretch that out to nine or 10 days or so, but usually I try to keep that cadence and I'll clean out one of the two canisters maybe every four months or so. I do have fake artificial plants in here. Sometimes a few of the leaves are bitten off by the Oscar and they'll be floating around, so I'll scoop those out of the tank during this time as well. But because I can't have live plants, the water changes are totally necessary on a tank like this. I can't really imagine any type of Oscar tank that wouldn't at least need a pretty good water change schedule. But once the tank is drained, that's when I'll add the regular end piece back to the python, and then I'll twist the python to on and start filling the tank with tap water. As this is filling, I make sure the temperature is pretty close to what it is in the tank. I'll then add my dechlorinator, which is usually Seachem Prime or Seachem Safe, and then I just sit back and let it fill. Okay, so we are back from the water change and the tank looks great. The algae has been cleared off the front panel. I did leave some algae on the back panel of the acrylic to see if the new Pleco would clean that off for me, but as soon as he was in the tank, he went to work on the algae in the aquarium, eating as much as possible, and pooping as well. Bruh. I'm just pooping, you know how I be. But hopefully with a strong filtration and flow, the increased bio load from this Pleco won't be too bad and the sand will still look good. And I guess I should mention the one other new fish to this aquarium, which is the Nicaraguan cichlid. This is actually a Central American cichlid that I put in this tank temporarily, but it's really fit in well, so it might stay here long term. I just didn't really have a tank for it at the time, so I put it in here. The one thing I was worried about was that they are extreme nesters. They dig out huge pits in the sand and he has definitely done that huge holes all over the substrate because of this Nicaraguan cichlid. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too damn bad! But that's not too much of a worry. Sometimes I just have to even out the sand a little bit more during water changes. But she plays really nicely with the South American cichlids in this tank, so she'll probably end up staying in here longer term. But next I wanted to give an update on the cichlids in this aquarium since a lot of them have been with me for four, four and a half years now, even though the tank is only three years old. When I set up this tank, they definitely got a big upgrade. I let a lot of these cichlids grow up before I introduced the smaller Oscar cichlid. It has grown into a beast and it is one of my favorite all-time cichlids. The personality really can't be beat with an Oscar. I especially love the Tiger Oscar. They grow so fast and I think one way to mitigate aggression issues is to introduce them when they're a little bit smaller than some other fish, letting the other fish get a head start in terms of growth. But next we have four Severums in this tank and they've been with me for four plus years now. Starting with Big Red, which is a red spot gold Severum. I also added a male red spot gold Severum a little bit later. They have been doing great. They sometimes go in the back right corner and lay eggs. They've done this probably once every month for the last year. But the eggs never really hatch because the other cichlids, especially the Oscar, are so curious and don't really let those fry hatch. Maybe one day I'll pull out the pair and maybe try to let them breed. But next I have a turquoise severum which has some great color. It's constantly changing color based on its mood. Sometimes it's a dark blue and sometimes it's a brown. It's just an awesome severum to keep. And then I have a red shoulder severum, the rock heel severum. This is a female though, so the color isn't quite as vibrant as some of the big males would be. 
but I've had this fish for a long time and it's done really well with all these cichlids. Next up are the geophagus I have in this tank. Like I mentioned, the top hose group is a little bit smaller now, but they're still doing great. And the top hose actually have a new scientific name. They are the pyrocephalus. And I absolutely love this species. They've been really peaceful and worked really well in this group. And they held their own against some of the bigger fish like the severums and the oscar. I also have a geophagus steindachneri. This is a female. It's gotten pretty large and sometimes it can be a bit territorial, but overall it's been okay in this tank as well. I also have the female Nicaraguan cichlid, which I talked about, and then I also have this black acara, which is about four and a half years old now. It's probably six to seven inches and really a thick fish, and overall it's been a pretty peaceful fish. I got it when it was tiny four and a half years ago, and it actually already had that cut in its dorsal fin, which I thought would maybe grow back, but it never had, but either way I've really enjoyed this fish. And last but not least, the one non-cichlid in this tank is my bala shark named Bruce. Hello. Bruce is a very large fish. He's probably a foot in length now. He eats very aggressively, a very active swimmer as well. It's one of my favorite non-cichlids in the hobby, and I knew when I was getting a big tank that I had to have one, and it's really been a great tank mate for these cichlids. But overall, during its first three years, I would say this tank has definitely been a success. Even though there's a few speed bumps with a few fish that I lost during the years, overall the fish have really coexisted peacefully they seem really happy and healthy, and they're all reaching their adult sizes and looking great. And there are a few other things that changed around this aquarium in the last year. A year ago, I set up this custom aquarium right around the corner. I love the pairing of these two tanks behind me. And I also got the new Cichlid Bros logo behind me, which was a Christmas gift from Quinn. I think it really ties the room together. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? And then for future plans for this tank, there are a few different South American cichlids that I've contemplated adding to this tank, especially to replace a few that I've lost. I've considered going with something a little more aggressive like a green tear, or something a little more peaceful like a walru. Let me know down in the comments section what you think about that. The other idea I have for this tank is to change out the aquascape completely, maybe adding a 3D background and just rescaping this tank since it's been like this for three years. I think it could be cool just to have a completely new aquascape for this tank, but also let me know what you think about that. But I always love giving updates on the 180. It was the first really big tank that me and my brother set up, so it's got a special place in our hearts. I hope you enjoyed seeing the three year update on this tank. Can't wait to show updates down the line. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.